you have an idea for an application and you know you want to build it yourself. So where do you begin? An application has many parts to it and it can be a little overwhelming figuring out where that starting point really is. You know, you don't want to jump around all the different components because it can be hard to keep track of things. It can lead to a lot of disorganization and just slow down your development overall. You also don't want to build in the wrong order because that can lead to a lot of rework down the road, which you want to avoid as well. In this video, we're going to walk through the first steps that everyone needs to take no matter what type of application they're building. This way you can lay down the right foundation and move through your development as efficiently as possible. Every application is made up of three core parts. First is your page design. These are the front end interfaces that your users will see and interact with. Then you have your backend database. This is where you're going to organize all of the application's data into structured tables and relationships, kind of like a spreadsheet. And then you have the logic that connects the two in between. So the logic is where you, you know, tell your application to execute certain commands, such as creating a record in the database or modifying something, or maybe showing an alert message visually on the page that the user is looking at. Now, what we typically see is that folks will jump straight into addressing the design portion of their application as the first part of their build. It makes sense because there's a lot of instant gratification that comes from seeing those visuals pop up quite quickly. The problem here is that it's very easy to creep into perfectionism and analysis paralysis, just putting together those wireframes before you even have a functioning application. While of course it's okay to be thinking about what you want your app to look like, we actually recommend addressing your database first, above all else. You know, most applications that are interactive are very data driven. So if you address the architecture of your data, how you organize it all behind the scenes, it's going to put you in a much better position to put together your logic as well as your designs. You know, your data structure does inform both of those other aspects of the app. Organizing your database structure first is going to help you figure out your initial scope of work. How comprehensive do you want to get with your data in the early versions? Because this will have a ripple effect in the amount of logic you have to build initially and the complexity of your page designs. Organizing your database structure first is also going to help you make decisions on what your data sources need to be. Is all of your data going to be user generated through inputs that you've designed on your pages? Do you need to integrate with third party systems through API connections or plugins? Or do you need to create an import system where users can come in with their own CSV and load data in that way? Not to mention, by setting up your data structure first, you can quickly create test records and that will help you better preview your front end designs because you can actually see those pages with your data actually loaded in. So it's just going to be more valuable for you if you do it in that order. So by addressing the database structure first, you're going to have a lot of important strategic decisions made for you. You'll figure out what the highest priorities are in terms of your core features. You won't spread yourself too thin on tackling too much at once and you'll lay a really solid foundation for both your logic and your designs that come afterward. And don't get me wrong, your database structure will evolve over time. You'll return to it and make tweaks as you get feedback from your users, as you want to make improvements or introduce new features. So this is something that will continue to change. You're not going to build it once and then just leave it alone forever. But it is the area that you want to start with because of how much of an effect it can have in the rest of the application. Also, before we head any further, I want you to bookmark this page for after this video, coachingnocodeapps.com slash bubble hyphen guide. We've put together a pretty exhaustive written and video list to help answer all of your bubble related questions if you're looking to build your app on bubble. So head there after this video. I think you'll find it pretty helpful as you move forward from here. Now that we know we want to start with our database, what does that actually mean? How do we get organized with all of the data we need in our application? Well, the first thing you want to do is write it all down. Get it organized in a way where you can see how relationships will come together, um, how you might label things so that you know you have a consistent system for yourself in the back end. Before you move it into your editor, you can use a spreadsheet or a flowchart. You might even want to use both. Go with whatever tool is going to make the most sense for you to organize your data. We love using spreadsheets as the first tool to help us organize our data because it's quick and easy to edit. You can itemize all of the different data points you'll need in the database. You can take notes for yourself, um, color code things if you need, group things in specific ways, and overall have this big picture view of your entire data set. So whether you're using something like Excel or Google Sheets, try using one of these tools to write out every single data point that your application is going to need to give you a better understanding of how comprehensive you want to get for your initial version. 
A flowchart, on the other hand, can help you get a different perspective on your database, primarily relationships. So tools like Draw.io or Lucidcharts can help you diagram how your data tables are related to each other. And you can do all sorts of relationships in a bubble application. So whether it's a one-to-one -one relationship, a one-to-many, or a many-to-many. This is very important to figure out early on because it's going to dictate how you define your tables, your fields, and those links between those records, you know, if there are gonna be links. A diagram like this can help you understand the hierarchy of those relationships. Creating a diagram like this is not only gonna help you understand the hierarchies of your data, but it's also going to help you figure out the right data strategy. You know, there are many ways to create connections between records, but you certainly don't want to overdo it and bloat it with too many links between records. You also don't want to have missing connections. If you can find the most efficient pathway between your records, then you're going to have a more optimized app. This may take some trial and error as you carry on in the rest of your app's development, but it is something that does start at this point. So be mindful of how uh, overly complicated you might be getting with your data structure. See if you can find ways to keep things simple and straightforward in terms of data pathways. Once you have your data structure figured out within a spreadsheet and or a diagram, now you can create that structure in your bubble editor by setting up your data types, fields, and maybe even option sets if necessary. This is gonna give you a good idea on what the maintenance is gonna look like around the construction of your database. Once this is in place, now the rest of the app can truly follow. So you can create test records and be able to see your data in context now within the overall structure. You can create privacy rules in Bubble. This is a capability that allows you to create granular and custom um, access rights to records per table. And this is highly dependent on your structure. You won't be able to create any privacy rules until you put your data types together. So you can give people access or restrict access based on uh, who they are, what their relationship is to the record itself. You can have them view only or edit uh, or even be able to auto bind if necessary. You can also start to automate your logic. So once your data structure is in place, now you can create workflows so that records can get created, they can be modified. Um, you can query your data set so that you can display search results, for example, back to your users in the front end design. And of course, you can start to design dynamically uh, information populating your front end interfaces so that everything really becomes much more interactive uh, from that initial data structure. All right, I hope this was helpful. And if it was, the content you're about to see on the next screen will help you take things even further.